So in this scene, I have these kind of floating ancient tablets here, but where it shines is in these massive silhouette changes, as well as in these areas where we've just got a lot of crazy detail like this. So how did I do this guy here? Well, there was a little bit of a different process or some additional steps uh, because of this base here. Now, if I pop over here into Maya, here's my original low poly. This was my game resolution for Unreal Engine 4. And my high poly that I was baking from, while the tablet itself was sculpted and I had a nice decimated version to work off of already, my base was actually just straight up modeled. I didn't do any sculpting on it, used a smooth mesh workflow on this and then baked it down to this low poly here. So converting this over to Nanite used a little bit of a different process. For one, my texturing workflow relied really heavily on the material IDs. So if we come over here into Substance and we look at the ID map, here we go. And all of my different colors on here are masking out a different material on this mesh here. So I wanted to make sure I was taking advantage of those material IDs. So I did need to maintain this. Uh, some of these guys, you know, they're not connected. It's not one continuous mesh. Uh, they're floaters sitting on top of it with their different material ID colors. So what I did to get my Nanite version of this is I took these guys and I brought them into Houdini where I merged them down into a single continuous mesh like this. Now this is something that you could also do in ZBrush if you're more familiar with that workflow. You could use DynaMesh for something like this. Uh, what I did in here with Houdini was I just brought it in with the file node here and we actually convert it to voxels to VDB right here the VDB from polygons uh, and when working with this I took my voxel size down to 0.1 so that it is really really accurate and then from here just converted it back into a mesh so what happens here is very similar to what ZBrush does with DynaMesh. Uh, it takes all of it, it merges it into one with voxels, and then spits out one continuous combined mesh on the other side. And then because I found that trying to load this into Unreal took over an hour, I went ahead and did a poly reduce down to 50% on this, which ended up looking virtually identical and uh, this had 669,000 uh, polygons here, which was a lot easier to work with in both uh, Maya and Unreal. So after I did that, uh, I brought this in. I took my low poly version here and we transfer the UVs. So you can see this here, same exact layout here, worked out just like the previous ones did. And from there, I loaded it in, brought it into Substance Painter, uh, just reloaded it, let it recalculate its textures, and I didn't have to do any extra work in here. All I had to do was bring my Nanite Mesh in and rebake it because the UVs were exactly the same. And this is an example of why when we're baking, aside from the artifacts, we want to actually have the high poly mesh in here because you're probably working with some kind of material IDs for your texturing workflow. So that way we can come in here and we can very easily mask these out like that. Now, one thing I did have to deal with when I was working with this one here 
probably because I was in a hurry with this, I was doing a rush job, is I did end up with these little artifacts down here, but I'm guessing that probably comes from the way that that um, the voxelization process worked and what it spit out on the other side. Uh, maybe there's some weird things going on. You can come in here and you can, you know, paint this out. Uh, you can double check your UVs and your uh, vertices, whatever you need to do to fix that. But what I found was once I got over here into Unreal, it's like, yeah, if you get up here really close, you can see those artifacts in there. Uh, but, you know, when you're looking at it like this, you don't really get anything and it's it's fine you can't really tell but looking at this again you know especially down here at the bottom piece when we get up a little bit closer uh, you can really tell that this is normal mapped on here uh, you can definitely tell uh, you can tell that this is normal mapped here with some of the differences in the curve and you can especially tell that this is normal mapped when you get really close to it uh, whereas in here on the nanite version these guys actually stick out they protrude out you know same as these down here the curves match a little bit better and little areas like this actually have some depth to them you know even if you're not looking at them you know head on you know, you're looking at them from a glancing angle like this yeah are in old workflows normal maps did a really good job for these kinds of things but when you've got the actual geometry here uh, and with the way that lumen happens to work with uh, bringing in you know this ambient occlusion right down here and the cavities and all of that uh, it just ends up looking so much better but it really is at your discretion on whether or not you need to do this for every single mesh in your scene that you might be converting. Now, that's up to you if you find it worth it, but there are some obvious situations where you might not want to use Nanite. Uh, one of the big ones is, of course, translucency and transparency, which Nanite does not currently support. So anything like foliage or anything like glass, it's not going to work with Nanite. If we look at this right here, you can see my windows. Uh, I converted the mesh over to Nanite, and now it has the default texture on it, uh, even though I have the appropriate materials assigned. Uh, what we can do though is we can just find it, find that mesh in the browser, right click Nanite and disable it. And once we disable it, we get our textures back because now our transparency is working again. Uh, another instance is vertex painting. So Nanite does not currently support vertex painting. Uh, when it does, once it does support vertex painting, that's going to be absolutely amazing uh, because we're going to be able to do so much with that. But right now it does not. So anything that you need vertex painted, you are still going to need a standard static mesh for. Uh, hopefully they introduce vertex painting uh, somewhere down the line. I'm really hoping for that because it's going to be amazing. Uh, but for now, static meshes. The great thing about Nanite though is that if you're using Nanite with a lot of other meshes in your scene that are really high poly, you know, it's going to basically reduce those down to essentially 2000 triangles, uh, which the good news here is that gives us more geometry that we can work with to start adding into our meshes that we might be vertex painting. So for example, if everything around this wall was a nanite mesh, then you know I could very easily probably double the you know the resolution of the geometry on this and get much tighter vertex painting. So the next thing that I needed to consider with my scene here and how that actually affects it was the areas that I have vertex painting going on. For example, 
these little blocks right here would be perfect examples of something that I could convert over to Nanite, but I did have these vertex paintable because these pillars over here were actually built with a combination of those blocks. The other thing that I had to consider was where I was using trim sheets. Uh, because the trim sheets, the idea behind them is that I can quickly model something out and then just UV it to those trim sheets. So for any future projects and thinking of working with trim sheets, maybe I would probably go in and start thinking about adding more geometry to the meshes that are using trim sheets. For example, I have a trim sheet that is applied down here, through here, all of this through here, all of this through here. And maybe I just go in and I add more geometry to it. Uh, for this conversion though, didn't really seem worth it. And besides, my trim sheet is also vertex paintable, just like these blocks over here. And the vertex painting actually adds a fairly significant importance to how this scene is put together. So I decided that the final nanite conversion that I was going to do for this scene was going to be the steps over here because I do have video footage that is coming towards it and flies up close to it. Now, if we pop over to the nanite compare level right here, we can see that here is my low poly version and here is my nanite version. Both of these have the 4K runtime virtual textures on them. And I just felt like I did get some nice detail coming out of this right here, uh, especially if you look at this damaged area, this damaged area up here, and then compare them to the Nanite version. So in a lot of cases, what I'm finding is that probably one of the best uses for Nanite is going to be for more of these organic kind of meshes that have a lot of noise detail or sculpted damage detail like this.